Hey yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV today. It is Tuesday, June the 19th, 2018, and we have got some very big breaking news as a top raw talent is being sidelined with an injury, and Vince McMahon is doling out seven foot tall walking papers. And we are going to talk about it right here and right now on the newest fastest rising podcast in all of YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Podbean, baby. The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show! Let's do it! All right, wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Nick Nightmare. Along with me, as always, is the world's greatest tag team of Thor the Sledgehammer, the wrestling god of thunder, and the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, my little buddy, my most trusted companion, and the world heavyweight champion of microphones, Blue the Snowball. Thank you guys for checking out the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show today for our breaking news report, which just dropped a few hours ago. We are a couple of hours away from tonight's SmackDown Live. It is hot as fucking balls in New York City right now, hence the sexified outfit, Deadpool style in here for you guys tonight. God, it's so muggy and hot and disgusting outside. I absolutely cannot get any reprieve from it. And apparently, things are heating up in the WWE as well, as we have two big-time superstars that are not going to be on TV anymore. One of them, due to injury, the other one, because he's a seven-foot failure. And he went into business for himself. And if we've learned nothing over the Attitude Era and how Vince McMahon has subsequently become the end-all, be-all of professional wrestling, you don't cross the boss, as Big Cass, has been terminated today by the WWE. I could have told you this was coming. You know, we talked about it when Big Cass first made the offense and all of the stories were coming out on how he was told no and then he went into business for himself, deviated from the storyline that Vince McMahon laid out for him um, concerning the angle with the Daniel Bryan little person that was in the ring. You don't do something if you're told not to. You know, it's a completely different story if he went out there with this idea in his head and then executed it without anybody knowing that he was going to do this and then go back and apologize for it after. That's the essence that you get when you hear people like Shawn Michaels and Triple H and guys from the Attitude Era who used to really push the envelope, try to get Vince McMahon to understand that the time was now to change the tone of the business. And they would do things on the fly and get in a whole lot of trouble and they would have to suffer the consequences of their actions. But in the end, their chances gave them a career in pro wrestling. Their chances helped elevate the company. Taking a chance on themselves, if Vince McMahon came to them and said, listen, I know you asked me if you can go out there and show your asses on national television during a strip poker game on Christmas season, during Christmas season. But I'm telling you no. And if that conversation went down and they went out there and flashed the world Merry Christmas across their ass with China standing in the middle, they would have been terminated immediately and that would be the end of it because you don't disobey a direct order. If he told you, Big Cass, he said, you know what, go out tonight, do whatever you got to do, you know, toss around the little person a little bit and, uh, and that'll be the end of it. And then Cass went to this extreme and apologized for it after. Then you have some valid reason to maybe give him a second chance. And you know what? I believe that Vince McMahon actually did give him a second chance because if they wanted to fire him after that initial offense, they could have done so after backlash. So by them extending the feud and bringing it on into Money in the Bank for Daniel Bryan to beat him so easily again and make him look like a fool again only tells me that Vince McMahon actually gave him another shot and he was actually going to forgive his transgressions, but then Big Cass fell flat on his seven-foot face. He doesn't have seven feet worth of charisma. He's got about seven inches of charisma. 
The guy's smiling with his dimples and he's trying to be all big and bad and it's just coming off as not genuine. You know, it's definitely not who Big Cass is. That is not who he is as a person and that's why it's coming off as phony. If you allowed him to just be himself, maybe this would have went on. Maybe since you split him from Enzo, because outside of him being with Enzo, he was going, he was destined to be a failure. He was not ready for a solo career. We talked about all of that when it happened. We said Enzo Amori maybe had a chance, just because of his pugilistic skills on the microphone. But Big Cass was dead in the water. And here we are, just a little bit over a year or more later, and I was dead right. I was dead right. Big Cass cannot hold it on his own. They could have done, the best thing they could have done for him is even removing him from Enzo. They should have gave him a manager. He could have used a guy like Paul Heyman or somebody else. Give him a female. Give him uh, Alana. You should have gave him Carmella instead of putting her with fucking James Ellsworth who's now reared his ugly fucking face again in the WWE. It should have been Big Cass that came out and helped her out. Make that an an alignment a team between the two of them because they were actually dating at the time. Now, I know that all crumbled and fell apart, but that's probably due to what happened with his career. And now here he is on the unemployment line. The biggest man on the line. It's kind of hard to hide, don't you think? Good thing you don't have to actually go down there anymore and everything's all fucking digital and automated. I don't feel good about talking shit about Big Cass right now. You know, he's a guy from my neighborhood. He didn't do us too proud in the ring on his solo run, but he was part of one of the biggest and greatest tag teams that started the NXT revolution. When they came up, they were one of the original examples of how the WWE just totally fucking sucks at booking NXT talent, and they don't know what they have in the palm of their hands, and they just absolutely waste it. Enzo and Cass did not even get their hands on the tag team championships and they were the hottest tag team in the business at the time of their arrival on Monday Night Raw. We had them cut promos on the Dudleys. We had things going on that were actually decent and intriguing at the time and we had Enzo and Cass, the most entertaining tag team on the roster and you turned them into a comedy act. The same thing you did with Gallows and Anderson. The same thing you did with the Fashion Police. Everybody's a fucking joke in the tag team division. And then you get tired of this because Vince McMahon sees seven feet tall and he gets a seven foot fucking erection in his pants and he needs this man to be a solo star to push to the fucking moon even though nobody wants to see that. Even though his magic was in that tag team. There was probably a time and a place for that tag team to have its falling out and have that rocker's moment but then was not the time, as here we are. Just a short amount of time later, Enzo is gone, Cass is gone, and the WWE can solely take the blame on this. You give this guy garbage fucking segment after garbage segment, and he goes out there knowing he needs to do something to bring this to the next level. Because what you're giving him is absolute drivel. So he goes and does this. But his biggest mistake was asking for permission first. And that is the bottom line. If you ask your boss, hey, can I leave at 3 o'clock? And he says no, and then you leave at 3 o'clock, he's going to fucking fire you tomorrow. You can't just go out and do what you want when you're asking permission. If you walked out of your job at 3 o'clock and then came back at your boss later and said, hey, listen, I had a run, it was an emergency at my house or whatever, he may be more forgiving of the scenario. But you still shouldn't do that either. You got to try to toe the line. You got to do what the company wants you to do if you want to try to get anywhere. This isn't the Attitude Era. This isn't the 90s where people push things. This is a whole new age. It's a whole new day. No pun intended. And Big Cass now finds himself with nowhere to go. You are not going to see him on WWE TV for quite some time. I expect he'll be back because Vince loves his big man and he just had to execute this to make an example out of him, most likely, so that other people don't follow suit and start going against the grain. Maybe in a year or two, Big Cass will be back. I certainly don't care one way or the other. I wish him well in his future endeavors, even though the WWE seemed to think that that was not something they needed to do. They just announced his release, much like they did with Enzo, as if they're all pissed off about it. So something definitely had to have happened, and that's going to be the end of the career of Big Cass 
for the time being. So after we know for a fact that he is not going to be on TV, somebody else that we know is not going to be on TV as of today is Sammy Zayn. Sammy Zayn is nursing some injuries and apparently he has been nursing some injuries for quite some time and nobody really knew about it. And it would probably explain a lot about this ridiculous bullshit feud we had to see with him and Bobby Lashley over the last few weeks. Sami Zayn's physical abilities were limited, so his his segments were based around him talking. He couldn't go out there and wrestle. Nobody was made privy to this knowledge, really. So we all just assume it's WWE's bad booking. Which, at the end of the day, it is, because if Sami Zayn's not feeling well and he's nursing injuries, why are you putting him in any kind of storyline at all? You could have done this storyline with Kevin Owens, who's pretty much languishing in the mid-card doing absolutely nothing of importance, and it might have gotten over a little bit better. But Sami Zayn was unable to perform over the last couple of weeks. It's probably why, at Money in the Bank, it was such a tremendous fucking squash match in such quick fashion, with little to no offense from Sami Zayn, him staying away from Bobby the whole beginning of the match, it makes things make sense. But Sami Zayn now will be off television for quite some time. The injuries uh, specifics have not been disclosed. He's going down to Alabama now, and he is going to get checked out by the WWE doctors down there and see what exactly the problem is. So Sami's going in there not even knowing why he ain't feeling so great and what's actually wrong with him, which is never really a good thing. You know, he's probably just banged up from all his years on the road. And that's, you know, that comes with the territory. It's part of the business. So he's going to go. He's going to grease up his wheels. He's going to take some time off. And hopefully by the time he comes back, the WWE Universe and the WWE Creative will have forgotten about all this Bobby Lashley bullshit. And maybe we could reset Sami Zayn again from the get-go and and try again. Because the guy deserves at least one decent fucking run before all is said and done. He's a fantastic talent. It's terrible that he was used in the way he was used, even though he was injured, which actually makes it worse for me. You know this, maybe he didn't tell WWE officials, but they wrote him off TV in a terrible way, but they have to protect their investments. They have to protect their talents, and Sami Zayn will be gone for an undisclosed amount of time and as soon as any more information on his condition is available I will bring it to you as soon as it is brought to my attention all of our stories today brought to you guys as always by Ryan Satin and the Pro Wrestling Sheet my good friends over there thank you guys for breaking the news as always PW Insider actually first reported the news of Sami Zayn's injury, but I did find out through Pro Wrestling Sheet. And once again, thank you guys for being there, bringing us all the greatest news in the world of pro wrestling, as I do. That's what I do here on this channel. I bring you the absolute best in professional wrestling news. I leave no stone unturned. I leave no punch unpulled. We cock back and we fire and bring the hammer down on every situation, just like I did with you guys for Big Gas tonight. Big Cass, it's a terrible situation. It's unfortunate he lost his job, but it is what it is. And I'm going to tell you how it is every time you come here to Sledgehammer TV and check out the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. If you are not already a part of the Sledgehammer Club right now, all you have to do is smash that subscribe button to join the hundreds of people that already know when you want it real and you want it raw and you want your SmackDown brought to you right. This is the place to be. Happy Rusev Day. I don't know if that's going to even be a thing anymore. We'll have to tune into SmackDown Live later tonight. That's going to be a thing. And we will be here to bring you our review of the Money in the Bank Aftermath show for SmackDown Live. As always, don't forget to bring your eyeballs back to this channel later on tonight for that. We got another breaking news story coming at you. WWE flexing their muscle here in New York City. If you want to know more about that, you're going to have to check out the next breaking news report that's coming at you guys in just a little while, probably right before SmackDown goes live tonight. Do not forget to smash that like button. Make sure everybody knows that you think we're thumbs up and that I know you think we're thumbs up so that we can keep bringing you the absolute best in all of professional wrestling podcasting. 
Thank you all so very much. Do not forget to share this video with each and every one of your wrestling friends all across the wrestling world so we can grow one person at a time, one video at a time as we take over the world, and it starts with you. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Podbean, or Stitcher Radio, all you have to do there is the very same thing. Hit the like button, hit the follow, give us a five-star rating. However it is that you can show your appreciation on all of the platforms, please feel free to do so as well. And most importantly, if you enjoyed this little tidbit in your ears through any of those audio platforms, you got to get over to youtube.com slash sledgehammer tv subscribe to the channel check out the set come into the studio with us see my awesome sexy deadpool tank top because you can't see it if you're just listening to me so get your eyes over here if you want some wrestling sexiness in your day today <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know why i even did that i don't know why i even did that i just did I did, and you watched it, and thank you for doing so. You guys are fucking awesome. I love each and every one of you. Thank you so very, very much. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the wrestling god of Thunder Thor the Sledgehammer who brings it hard and strong every single time we fire up this camera. My trusty companion and the world heavyweight champion of microphones, Blue the Snowball. This has been the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's breaking news report right here on Sledgehammer TV. That is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you later tonight for SmackDown Live right here on the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. Have a good one. See you later.